And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at an expansion for Mystic Veil vale called Mystic Veil, vale, Veil vale of Magic. Now, obviously, this is more cards for the set, but also obviously they put about zero thought into the title of this expansion. Mystic Veil, vale, Veil vale of Magic. That's, that's the same thing. I, I really am kind of mind boggled at that. But I think... That's kind of um, a indication of what's in this set. Mystic Veil vale is a card crafting game where you're going to be making cards. Well, you can watch my full review to see more about this, uh, how this game works. But this, the name is the same. Well, this is basically more of the same. It just adds more cards. You shuffle and there's no new mechanisms. There's no new anything. It's just new cards, essentially. Let's take a look at these cards. <laughs> There are three of each of the, the new cards that go inside the sleeves of each type. So I'm showing you, these are all the level one types. And you can see there's some pretty basic types here. So we have one that's a point with a helmet. Here we have one that's a, gives you money and then yellow. And one that's green with the veil. Over here we have one that's brown. And this one gives you one point for every uh, helmet on the card. We have a double helmet card down here, the Century. And then this is the unique one, I suppose, or the new one from the first set. And it says for each helmet on the card, place that many cards from the top of your deck at the end of your field. So it's a way to get more cards out there when you play this one. So those are the level ones. Let's take a look at the level twos. So here we have the, now there's more special abilities on these. These aren't quite as normal. We have the Ley Line Overflow. Here, I, I mean, I really like this one. After determining your total amount of money, you double it. That's pretty cool. Now, it does come with this, uh, with, with that, but I don't know. I would still buy it. We also have the, the, the Hatchery here. If this is not the first card in this field, leave it in play as the first card in your field for your next turn. So what the Hatchery does is it basically lets you play a card twice. Now the problem is it doesn't give you anything on the card itself, but if you put it with some good stuff, it can stay there. Water Weaver is pretty much basic, gives you one of everything. Over here we have the, the Golden Wing Griffin. When you play this, you can turn this token to the active side. It's not the first time you'll see that. It also gives you several different resources. Uh, this one here is just worth two points. And then we have the Life Tap Oracle, for each helmet on the card, discard, search your deck for a card. You may discard it, then shuffle your deck. So that's kind of interesting. It's a way to get the cursed lands out of your deck. There's actually one more number two, but I'm going to show you the number three at the same time. The last number two is here, the Heartwood Healer, which simply gives you some life. So that's nice. And then we have my favorite artwork-wise, the Chromatic Wyvern. I love this guy. Uh, I know that he gives you this, but he gives you two wilds here to get the Veil cards and a helmet and a point. I really enjoy him. And the Overgrowth is also interesting. It gives you a point in that, but it gives you this. But it's also worth five points at the end of the game. And it's a helmet, so this kind of gives you a little bit of everything. The Creeping Mold, this one gives you six points, but two of those. Yes, that means you're going to pop a lot. But you know what? I don't care. I'll take this. Um, the Sporling Reclaimer, this card is worth one point for every... Helmet in your deck, so if you're making a deck full of these, this guy's worth it. And then the Grove Guardian, who's, this one's just really good. Gives you a helmet, money, that, two points, and it's worth two points at the end of the game. If you have nine, this one's a, a no-brainer to buy. So those are those cards. Let's take a look now at the, the Veil cards. There are several level one Veil cards and level two Veil cards that are in this set. So you can see some of them are... Here's some level ones. Choose a card in your field. Uh, once per turn, you can spend two to get a point. But a lot of them, when you buy them, give you a special ability. So here are two that when you buy them again, you can flip this to the active side. Uh, this one here, and there's another one where you can flip to the active side. So you can see that's kind of a thing that's in this set. Here, I really like the, way this, the artwork in this card. But if you're about to spoil, you can discard this card to cancel all 
on something on one card that's not from a cursed land, which is similar to other Veil cards, but this one's also worth a point. The level twos, this one's worth five points. Here's some more stuff that when bought, you gain one point for every Veil you own, including this one. Here's a nice harvest one. This is the Veil of Magic. This is what the set's named after. That's pretty cool. And more when bought, gain two to spend this turn. When bought, draw and keep a level one. I already like this one because I'm always hoping that I'll get a really cool level one Veil. So that's the new stuff. Some of the Veil cards, there's two of, but most of them there's one of. And all these cards are just shuffled and added to the regular deck. So you can see that it's, there's some cool cards in there. There's some neat things, but it's kind of interesting because I, I like this, these cards and I'm certainly glad to have a big variety of new cards and stuff. It's just that none of these really, it's not like, ooh, that's an amazing card. Well, I guess there's some, a few that I like, but it's hard to explain. I, I, when I do a lot of reviews of expansions, I'm always talking about, oh, I want more, you know, more of the same is always a good thing. And that's true. More of the same is a good thing here. But here, I, I actually mix the cards together. There's no way to, to tell which ones are expansions, which ones are not. So I, I found, a, I got a list and separated them. But you know, if I hadn't had that list of which ones were in the expansion and which ones were in the base set, I actually would not have been able to tell. There's a few like, oh yeah, I, I remember this one. Some of the ones with text. But the rest just look basically like the same cards from the base set. Now that's a good thing on one hand, because it means there's a lot of variety uh, from the base card sets. But on the other hand, this set doesn't really do anything to distinguish itself. And I'm going to bet that there's going to be many more expansions for Mystic Veil down the road. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool game. It's a game I really like a lot. And I think this expansion will not ever be looked at as one of the best expansions. People will go, oh yeah, that's cool. You want more cards? Get that. And that's the, that's the extent of it. Now, should you get it? If you like Mr. Veil, sure, get it. More cards. Just don't be expecting any like, ooh, what's the new mechanism of this set? Well, there isn't any. It's just the same thing as the name indicated. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Please do too.